Hey guys, it's Bex. In today's video, we are going to be talking about all of the books I read in 2023. I would definitely say it was a really good reading year. Not only did I read pretty good books, I also read a good amount of books. For me at least, I read 50 books exactly. So nice even round number. My original goal like on Goodreads, my reading goal was to read 55 books and obviously didn't quite make it and most of that is because one of the books I read took me like literally two months to read. <laughs> it was the only book I read in those two months. That is okay. 50 is still a lot and like I said they were all mostly pretty good. I figured it would be easier to just look through my reading journal because I have a list of all of the books I read and the ratings and the author's name and everything. That is probably just what I'm going to be looking at instead of grabbing each book and having to put them away and it just takes forever. We're going to kind of try and go through them quickly. We'll see about that. I tend to just ramble and I'm really bad at like describing a book really in like just one short little sentence or a couple sentences but we're gonna try so we started off with a bang and i read the summer i turned pretty series by jenny han i read these in january which is normally kind of weird because it's not summer but i actually read them when i was in hawaii so it was perfect on the beach perfect vibes the whole series is a young adult romance series about a beach and a girl and a love triangle between two brothers and Super, super cute. I really enjoyed it. I gave the first book four and a half stars, second book four stars, and the third book three and a half stars. And honestly, I might have given it higher rating now, but overall really good. Then I read the Harry Potter, or I continued on with the Harry Potter series. I started it last year, and I was on Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling, and I rated every single book in the series five stars. So we're just gonna say that now, but... I guess that's all I really have to say about that one. That one's not like one of my absolute favorites of the series, but they're all still five stars. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I listened to this one on audiobook and it is a sci-fi, adult sci-fi, about this guy in space and he has to save Earth. I haven't read many sci-fi books. That might have been the first one and I really, really liked it. I rated it four and a half stars, I think. Only four stars. But I highly recommend, even if you're not really into sci-fi, it was really easy to understand. It does talk like a little bit about math, but they say it in a way that it doesn't even matter if you understand what the guy is talking about. And I cried in it. One of the characters in the book, you probably know if you've read it, just oh love him then for valentine's day i read a cute little rom i was gonna say rom-com but just romance young adult romance by lynn painter the do-over which is perfect for valentine's day because it's a time loop book that takes place on valentine's day i rated that one four stars then i finished up the harry potter series which was very sad and i read harry potter and the deathly hollows Again, five stars. I believe this was my longest book of 2023. I think it's like 760-ish pages or something like that. Not the longest book in the Harry Potter series, but one of them. That one was probably, is probably like my top three Harry Potter favorite books. I recommend that one and obviously the whole series because you can't just read that one. Literally obsessed with Harry Potter. Then I read The House Across the Lake by Riley Saker and per usual to his genre is a mystery thriller. It is about this actress who kind of has hit rock bottom and goes to this lake house that her family owns and she starts spying on her neighbors and one of them goes missing. I really liked it. I rated it four stars. Then I read another very large book probably top three biggest books I read this year and my first Stephen King book and that is The Talisman which is one of his fantasy books so he writes a lot of horror scary books but he also writes some fantasy and this is like kind of a classic I feel like everyone has at least heard of it I feel like it wasn't the best book to start by to start with by Stephen King at least I heard that and I kind of agree with it it's still technically the only Stephen King book I've read you'll see later I read a novella from him it just took me forever to read like I said earlier this is the book that took me two months to read I don't really know why the beginning is pretty slow 
low I will say like overall I really liked the book I rated it 3.75 stars so it wasn't a bad book at all I really liked it the story is amazing epic I love the main character. I still recommend it. Maybe if you've read books like it or other Stephen King books and already know that you like his writing and stuff. That was kind of a bummer just that it took me so long. Oh, and it's also co-written by Peter Straub, by the way. Then I listened to an audiobook called 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. It wasn't my favorite. I rated it three and a half stars, like 3.25, really. Which, honestly, thinking back on it, one of my least favorite books of the year probably my top five least favorite books of the year it's did I say it's a thriller already about this girl and it takes place in COVID times and she meets this guy so like no one really knows that they're together because of COVID so it's kind of like the perfect opportunity to commit a crime basically and it's like then and now timeline and it just wasn't my favorite then I listened to another audiobook The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley and again this wasn't one of my favorite favorite books but I liked it better than 56 days I rated it three and a half stars this one fell a little bit flat for me but it was still entertaining which is why I gave it three and a half stars I guess I just didn't really connect with the characters it's multiple POV which as far as I know all of her books are and there's a whole cast of characters on the audiobook so that part of it is nice and it helps it be enjoyable I feel like. So three and a half stars for that one. Then I read the little novella by Stephen King called 1922. Never heard of this book. I almost guarantee that anyone watching this has never heard of it. <laughs> but me and my sister buddy read it and she loves Stephen King. She's read a lot of his books. So we decided to read that together and it took both of us like a couple weeks to read it and it's literally like a hundred and I don't know 40 pages somewhere around there it's really short I don't know why it makes it sound like I don't like Stephen King's writing that's not it it definitely wasn't my favorite that one is more of like a horror ebook like it's not super intense or anything like that but there are some scenes that leave you a little icky and stuff like that. Dance of Thieves and Val of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. I rated Val Dance of Thieves the first one four and a half stars and Val of Thieves it was so close to being a five star it was 4.75 which is very specific but that just felt right to me. It didn't quite feel like a five star read but I highly recommend the series. It is a young adult romanticy enemies to lovers people say it's like kind of the blueprint of enemies to lovers which i think it was the, like the one of the first romanticy enemies to lovers that i've read so perfect the fantasy is pretty easy to understand and absolutely recommend that duology malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed which was my second Taylor Jenkins read book. I listened to, again, some authors for some reason, I just listened to their books and I believe, I could be wrong, but both books that I've listened to by her have the same narrator. Can't remember her name right now, but I think she's also an author and I really like her. So highly recommend her audiobooks and her books in general because the first one I read by her was Daisy Jones and the Six and I really liked that, but I liked Malibu Rising even better. I rated it 4.5 stars and it was perfect to read in the summer, which is when I read it. It is about a family that is famous, her, their parents are famous and surfing and beach and very sad and heartbreaking at times you just want to punch some of the characters in the face but such a good book then I'm just gonna talk about this next series as a whole because I pretty much read them all in order a couple books in between there but for the most part I read them all one after another and that is the selection series by Kira Cass I feel like a lot of people read these books when they were younger because they have been around a while, but I never did. I never even really heard about them until booktube, which is kind of crazy, but they are young adult romance with a little bit of fantasy involved. There's some like parts of their society that is, or is it more like dystopian? I don't know how you describe it, but it's basically like The Bachelor but with royalty so I really thought it was cute I rated different books in the series different ratings but I started off strong with 4.5 stars for the first book I just thought it was so cute and fun to read and was it anything groundbreaking no but I just enjoyed my time reading it 
a lot and I read it really fast. Then the second book, The Elite, I rated four stars. Then The One, four stars. The Air, four stars. And The Crown, which is the last one, 3.75 stars. So I enjoyed those. And in between those, I listened to another audiobook, Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. I kind of got this book on Audible on a whim because I wanted to get like one or two more summary books in. I think it was like August when I read this and I'm so glad I did. I did not expect to love it so much, but I rated it five stars, which is crazy, but that was my first five-star read since the Harry Potter books, so it was only my third five-star read of the year, and it was August, so I don't know. I had a lot of, like, four stars before that, but this book was so good. It is, like, a literary fiction about this young girl, Mary Jane, and she goes to Nanny for this little girl, and the family that she nannies for is just way different than her own family and it kind of opens her eyes and shows her a different kind of love and family and it was really heartwarming and I really really liked it. You should definitely read it. Then I had another five star read which was a romance and that was Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I listened to this one too. It is a young adult romance. I think she does those so well. I've only read two by her so far, but I really enjoyed them both, especially this one. This one just had me like giggling, kicking my feet. Absolutely love the love interest, Wes. He is just like such a nice guy and the book was just adorable. Then I started a new series, Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I got this book for my birthday in August and read it pretty soon after I got it because I was so excited. This is a young adult, adult, that's up for debate kind of sci-fi series. There's a trilogy, the main trilogy, and there's also books after that are kind of in the same world. But this is the first one of the trilogy and it is about, I'll just say that people compare it to the Hunger Games but in space because there's like a competition between a bunch of teenagers pretty much fighting to the death and it takes place on Mars. Oh, and I rated that four and a half stars. Layla by Colleen Hoover. This is one of her thriller books. I don't think she has very many. I've only read her thriller books and that is very in this one. I don't know if she has any more. I've never read any of her like romance books, but I really, really loved Verity. It's not in this video, but that was like the first book that got me into reading again, kind of. I also got this one for my birthday, so I read it. I will say I liked it more than I thought I was going to. I think I just heard not the best things about it, but I rated it four stars. I would categorize her thrillers, though, as like romance thrillers because they do involve romance and... I would say it's a decent portion of the story. Like the thriller aspect kind of revolves around the romance. If you like both of those genres, then you might like that book. Then I read One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. I didn't really like it. Three stars. I uh, listened to it on audiobook. Thank God, because I probably would have DNF'd it otherwise. I feel like my rating system is weird because three stars means it's like not a bad book and it wasn't, but the main character was just so annoying to me. And I think the only reason I rated it three stars even is because it takes place in Italy, Positano, Italy, and I felt like she did a really good job at painting the picture of being there and it really made me want to go there. And I was like Googling pictures of Positano, Italy to like get a good idea of where the main character was. That's probably only why it was three stars, but I didn't really like it. The main character was annoying and the story in general was just meh. Probably top three least favorite books. Then I read The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. This is an adult mystery thriller. Basically, this husband and father goes missing or well, he basically just leaves. We don't know what happened to him, obviously, until the end but he just leaves like his wife and daughter like a little note and that's it and so they have no idea what happened and they try and figure out where he went and why he disappeared off the face of the earth. And I feel like I liked the book at first and then it kind of went downhill for me which I feel like is usually the opposite of what happens. Kind of takes you a bit to like get into the story usually and then it's like oh the ending was so good but it's kind of the opposite for me so it ended up being a 3.75 stars. Then I read the second book in the Red Rising series Golden Sun again by Pierce Brown and I loved this book even more than Red Rising which means I rated it five stars. If you weren't one of the people that absolutely loved Red Rising but you still liked it I would say that you might really really love Golden Sun. It is kind of a different vibe 
than the first book because the first book is more of a competition and this book it's after the fact and it is kind of more politics I would say than maybe the first one but at the same time you already know the characters and the kind of society so it's easier to understand because that was one of my complaints with the first one is that I just got confused and there was a lot of characters and he makes up a lot of words and you're like what does this word mean again and you have no idea because he literally explains it once at the very beginning and there was a lot of characters so I got confused but by this one I kind of knew more and that helped and it's just heartbreaking at times I cried really hard at the end. The Atlas Six by Ollie Blake. This is a fantasy book and it's one of the very popular ones. You've probably heard of it. I was pretty late to the game on this one but I was excited to read it. I read it for a video where I read the lowest and highest rated books on my physical tbr and golden sun was the highest one and this one was the lowest one so i was kind of going into it like oh do people not really like this book like i thought people did but i liked it i rated it 4.25 stars so pretty good i have not yet read the next one and i think there's even a third one coming out but i do want to eventually finish off the series but it wasn't anything so groundbreaking that i was like i need to buy the second book right now but I would still definitely recommend it. Then another one that kind of fell flat for me, I listened to an audiobook and that is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. She's the one that writes Divine Rivals and I probably should have started with that book, which I'm about to start, but I didn't. I started with this one. It was on my fall TBR because I thought it would be more of a fall book than Divine Rivals, so I would I guess that's why I started with this one instead. It's kind of like a folklore, low stakes fantasy book. And I think that's kind of similar to what Divine Rivals is kind of a low stake fantasy. And I thought that, you know, it would be perfect for those cozy vibes and nothing crazy, but I didn't really love it. Rated it 3.25 stars. So if you like that kind of book, I think you might really like it, but I think I don't really. So now every time I see like a book being described like this one or that's like folky, I'm like, okay, maybe this book isn't for me. You know how to say folklore? It took me a second, okay? What are you talking about? I was like, folk tale? Folk? <laughs> what are you talking about? Folklore. Folklore, bro. It just seemed wrong for me for a second. Then I started one of what would soon become my absolute favorite series of 2023, and that is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I think that my whole personality at this point is like Stephanie Garber books. I, even though I didn't rate the first book, Caraval, five stars, I rated it four and a half stars. I still absolutely loved it and it just gets you into the story and the world of Caraval and Once Upon a Broken Heart, which is her spinoff series takes place in the same world so well and it introduces you to the characters and I think the main reason that I didn't end up rating this one five stars is because the main character although I absolutely loved her I liked the revolves around two sisters and I liked the sister that is in the second book legendary more and kind of her story so that's why but four and a half stars for the first one it's like a young adult romanticy series and it's like there's this game called caraval and the two sisters get invited to participate in the game and you like don't know what's real and part of the game and what's not so so good and legendary second book rated five stars six stars I think. I think I had two six stars of the year and this was one of them. And then finale, also rated five stars, last book in the series, the trilogy. So, so good. We were just on banger after banger because then I read Fourth Wing and I rated it five stars. That, you've probably heard of it, you've probably read it. I think it was probably the most like popular viral book of 2023 and that is by Rebecca Yaros. It is a, another young adult romanticy about dragons and dragon riding and dragon riding school and enemies to lovers romance so so good highly recommend it then i got into some more fall witchy books because it was october and i read paybacks a witch by lana harper which is just a witchy romance book and i rated that one 3.5 stars it was cute nothing crazy probably will never read it again but i recommend it if you're right around 
Halloween and you want a book like that. Then I read The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling, which is the second book in the little series by her. The first book is called The X-Hex. I read that last year. Well, it's 2024 now, so I read that in 2022. I liked it, so I read this one and I rated it four stars. Same thing, witchy romance. And then I read another one because it was for a video. I read The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. And I really liked this one too. I rated it four stars. It's more less of a romance, witchy romance book and more of like a witchy fiction. I don't know. It's very heartwarming, less in a romance way and more of like family and finding what makes you happy and people that love you and stuff like that. Get into the end. Then I read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead which is a mystery thriller. And I rated that with four and a half stars. I really liked it. I liked it more than I thought. I didn't really know, like I thought I would like it, but it surprised me. It's kind of like a dark academia because it takes place at a college. Then and now timeline, the then timeline was when these friends were in college. And the now timeline is when they're at their 10 year college reunion. And when they were in college, a murder happened to one of their best friends. And the now timeline, they're pretty much unraveling a bunch of secrets and information and trying to figure out who killed their friend because it was never solved when they were in college. So four and a half stars. Then I read one last witchy book. I listened to this one and that is In the Company of Witches by R. Lee Wallace. And this is like a cozy witchy mystery book. It fell a little bit flat for me. I rated it 3.25 stars. Again, I think I would recommend it if you like kind of slower paced cozy book for the fall time that involves witches and magic. But it wasn't my absolute favorite. I didn't wasn't super invested in the mystery aspect which is pretty much the main aspect. Then I started another favorite series of 2023 and that is the Once, I don't even know if you can see them, Once Upon a Broken Heart series. These books are all front and center because I love them. <laughs> Stop! Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. It is a, another trilogy by her, the spinoff of Caraval and so it takes place in the same world but different characters mostly one of the characters in the caraval series is one of the main characters in this series and he was one of the favorites so very glad that she made a spin-off series mostly about him and just so so good the fantasy the romance the slow burn everything i rated it five stars or wait it said that i rated it five stars i really thought i rated it like 4.5 but Either way, it was amazing. Then, continuing with the series, The Ballad of Never After, the second book, was my probably only other six star read of 2023. I just keep saying this, but I absolutely loved it. Perfect, perfection. And then very shortly after it was released, the third book, A Curse for True Love, I read, and I really liked it as well. I only gave it a four and a half stars because it didn't have enough kind of of what I'd been waiting for the whole series between the main two characters Evangeline and Jax but overall still loved it and still will recommend the series for the rest of my life and in between those three books I listened to two audiobooks and the first one is The Guest List by Lucy Foley this is the second book by her that I was talking about earlier that I listened to and I liked this one better than The Hunting Party I rated this one a 3.75 stars so I don't think her books are my absolute favorite like mystery thrillers this is a mystery thriller but I do still think they're fun the plot twist at the end or really just what was really just what happened and the kind of secrets that came out I thought were just a little bit too much of a coincidence to be realistic and it was just a little bit unrealistic for me in my opinion but it was crazy I will give Lucy Foley that it was crazy then I listened to The Night Circus on audio by Aaron Morgenstern and I'd actually started this book earlier a little bit in the year but I was listening to it through my library and my hold expired it's kind of a longer book and so instead of like buying it, I just waited for it to come back to be my turn and finished it. And I probably shouldn't have because I didn't like it. 
I rated it two and a half stars, which is literally my only two star rated book all year. So it was probably my least favorite book of the year, which is kind of sad because I was really excited to read it. I'd heard really good things, mostly, but I think I'm part of the minority that just thought it was too slow, too boring, not very much happened. I felt like I was waiting, like, the whole book for something to happen, and it just never really did. The author's writing was very pretty, and... The narrator I think did a really good job but she wasn't for me so that was a bummer then I read another new release Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros like right after it came out and that is the second book in the Empyrean series I think it's called the fourth wing series this book was just really big it was like 600 pages and 600 pages and there's a lot of words on each page so it took me a little bit longer to read and I just think overall it was a little bit too long but overall I really liked it I rated it four and a half stars I think a lot of people didn't really like this book and I didn't like it as much as fourth wing but I still really recommend it and I'm definitely going to continue the series then the last four books I read were all holiday Christmassy books first one being in a holidays by Christina Lauren my first Christina Lauren book it is like a time loop book that takes place during Christmas and it is a romance, adult romance. And it was adorable. It's uh, Friends to Lovers, which I think I really like and I rated that one four stars. Then I listened on audio to The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand, which is kind of like a not retelling of a Christmas Carol but kind of the main girl is dead and she like works for this company called Project Scrooge and they basically have the three ghosts and they pick a new Scrooge every year and she was a Scrooge in her life and it kind of is just about her realizing that and her growth and stuff like that and it was really cute i enjoyed the audiobook and the book itself i rated that one four stars as well love light farms by bk borison is another christmas adult romance and it is friends to lovers fake dating about this girl that runs a christmas tree farm and she says she has a boyfriend but she doesn't so she just asked her best friend to fake date her and pretend to be her boyfriend and again so cute really liked it I rated that one 4.25 stars and the very last book of 2023 that I read I listened to on audio and that is The Family Game by Katherine Steadman and this is a holiday thriller about this lady who is about to marry into this like really powerful family but they've got some secrets and she's unraveling all the secrets slowly throughout the holiday like from thanksgiving to christmas and i liked that one as well i rated it four stars and would definitely recommend for a holiday thriller and that is all the books i read in 2023 50 books that took forever so thank you guys for <laughs> watching and listening to me rant and ramble on about these books i'm having an allergy attack and i will see you guys in my next one bye